Coming up on the St. Paul Forum, I'm speaking with Tim Griffin and Wing Young Huey about creative placemaking in cities. That's coming up next on the St. Paul Forum. Welcome to the St. Paul Forum. I'm Catherine Reed Gay, and joining me today are Tim Griffin and Wing Young Huey, and we're talking about creative placemaking in cities. Welcome. Welcome. Thank Welcome. you. Thank you. Really glad you could be here. So uh, next week is going to be a very exciting one in the city of St. Paul and Minneapolis, and we're going to be looking at uh, the creative placemaking. Can you tell us a little bit about what that means to you? Yeah, it's been a, about a five-year uh, journey um, that we've been doing this uh, event. And it's an idea of bringing outside um, uh, experts, if you will, um, but active in the field of placemaking, which is really about this, the um, improving and generating community and public life in the city, throughout the city. And so uh, we've, we've crafted a program over the last few years where we bring individuals in and uh, we do both general sessions with them, and then we also do place-specific sessions. And so there'll be, <coughs> excuse me, there'll be about 12 sessions over the course of the week, and uh, three, three a day. Great. And uh, we have a great, great agenda for it. Like and and when we say we, you're talking about the St. Paul, the Riverfront Corporation, right. is one of the, is the primary convener of this event? Right. Um, the St. Paul Riverfront Corporation has been a, a partner in this for all five years. We've had different partners, different years. And this year, because of the topic about <clears throat> equity and design, we've organized a much broader kind of steering committee that is listed on our website and the, and the brochure. So it's a, a, an important kind of uh, evolution of the event. So um, tell us, how did Wing get involved in this? I know, mo many of us know him for his University uh, Avenue project that uh, brought um, voices to life on the avenue in a really exciting way as a photographer. And, um, but how did, what, what's the connection for you um, and bringing Wing in as, a, as one of the, the consultants? Well, during our, the rest of the year, the Riverfront Corporation is involved in um, uh, urban design and community development throughout the Twin Cities. Um, but a big focus our last uh, five or six years has been University Avenue and the Green Line. And I uh, met Wing first, I think, uh, at an exhibit at the Minnesota Museum of American Art where he'd shown his, kind of, his evolving uh, style of, uh, of, uh, of uh, placemaking, if you will. And then, of course, the University Avenue project that was uh, very inspirational and I think kind of set a, a tone um, and began to kind of raise this quest question of who lives on University Avenue and how will they benefit from the um, investment over time. Mm -hmm. So Wing, um, you've been making art for many years. You you grew up in Duluth, I believe, and born and raised in Duluth. Uh -huh. I am a native of Minnesotan. Uh -huh. And uh, you came to the Twin Cities. And uh, tell us a little bit about this. Um, for people who don't know the, the University Avenue project, um, can you tell us just briefly about the evolution from that to where we are now? I spent four years photographing everyday life in the neighborhoods connected by University Avenue, six mile stretch from the state capitol to where it starts west of uh, 280 and really trying to understand who we are and who defines what University Avenue is. University Avenue is a microcosm of what we are becoming. It is America. It's really exciting for me to think about that uh, and imagine I've had a studio on University Avenue for 20 years mm -hmm. and I've been working at one end of the avenue, um, the Creative Enterprise Zone, which mm -hmm. SPNN is, is right in the middle of. Um, and, and I'm just so fascinated by when you say that, that we're a microcosm and we're going to talk about mm -hmm. placemaking and equity, what do you mm -hmm. think that means? Mm -hmm. And I want you both to think about how you want to answer that. Mm -hmm. um, you're, you're next. It's you. <laughs> Who gets to define the place? Who are we as Minnesotans? Uh, the perception of who we are is not caught up to the realities. I was just at a conference, people from national conference, and I was, they were looking at my photographs, and then we were saying, there's Somali people here in Minnesota? Oh yeah, we have the largest Somali community in the United States. Really? Mm -hmm. How is the perception of Minnesota shaped? 
how much of it is popular culture. A lot of people think about Minnesota because they, they, they've seen the movie Fargo, which is not even in Minnesota. <laughs> Land of the Vikings. Mm -hmm. uh, we have pockets of the most diverse concentrations of socioeconomic, cultural diversity in the country. We do. People don't really realize that. And that, that the, the idea of Minnesota has been perpetuated in the media and in popular culture. So how can placemaking help us uh, help us with that that gap that gap in understanding our, our real identity and and I would then add how does it help us ourselves in narrowing those gaps images that, that's a big big question images mm -hmm. when I was growing up I didn't see anything very little in popular culture that reflected my realities there weren't many Asian boys they always said bit parts and so popular culture shaped me it did not reflect me but it's so overwhelming you can't avoid it mm -hmm. And so the diversity that we see every day, walking down, driving down, biking down University Avenue, you don't see it reflected in the images that we consume every day. We live in a very diverse society that is still driven by a monolithic, homogeneous pop culture. Mm -hmm. and, the inter and, and, the, and, and the internet um, is hopefully will diversify that and democratize it, but I think it also does the opposite. Keeps, keeps us segmented. Yes. So let's go back to the notion. So we've talked about the avenue. Um, this placemaking residency is going to tackle the issue of equity. It's, a, it's going to be both in Minneapolis and St. Paul, if I'm correct. And there are multiple experts or consultants who are engaging in the, in the dialogue. Let's talk briefly about the, the core themes that they're addressing. Because you've got, I was very interested. I am a psychologist by training as well mm. as an artist. So I'm really interested in the session on Monday. Uh, can you uh, mention uh, how it was that you came up with the idea of a psychologist, uh, some, of these, some of these personalities and people that you're bringing in, and tell us a little bit about who they are? Right, well, I think the, the idea of these, um, the evolution from an individual um, uh, resident to a team, if you will, <coughs> kind of stems from the whole interdisciplinary way that placemaking is, uh, is, now, is, is, now being, is now being done. And um, the group that's, uh, I don't have the, the, the full roster here because it's, it's larger this year. I was able to remember each person as we, you know, as we, as we uh, um, in the previous years. On our website, uh, riverfront, riverfrontcorporation.com, there's a kind of the brochure and everything that's uh, put together. Um, but the idea of the arts in, in, in placemaking, uh, it almost goes back to, it, personally, in terms of uh, Wing's work on the University Avenue project, it's a way of inspiring. It's a, it's a way of inspiring um, community designers to kind of organize um, the ideas for that place. And it also, it also, I think, what really poignantly it did is who it showed who is who lives in those communities. And it, and and the and the, and the folks that are in those pictures um, are very different than you typically see at uh, community quote community meetings. And so our whole approach to uh, engagement has evolved to uh, to try to uh, make these uh, these conversations more accessible and so forums like this these general forums uh, like at the um, Institute of Arts um, are one way to have a, a broad conversation and I think and I'd encourage everybody to look around the room and see who's there because I think largely these forums aren't reflective of, of the diversity of the community uh, on the other hand can the local place bake ones uh, start to do that again look at the audience and I think mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think you, you you know in terms of what the access to that is you know what the um, concerns, the fears. Uh, we're talking about change, and are the folks who live there now going to be uh, able to stay uh, stay there in the future and and benefit from these conversations and investments that are that have mm -hmm. been made? So one of the things we'll note is that you mentioned something at the uh, Art Institute. I'm hoping to attend that one. I believe that's on um, Wednesday of next week. Um, one of the questions I have because these uh, shows that we tape uh, here. Uh, run multiple times mm -hmm. at different hours and they mm -hmm. may or may not coincide with people actually being able to come to the event So I do want to check in and say what will be available after the event? Um, is there going to be material on your website later? Are there um, right. is there any video going to be posted later? Yeah, I think it's our the conversation is is getting more robust than just the one week mm -hmm. um, There's a lot of lead up to it where we form relationships and um, 
uh, organize these teams. Um, we roll we roll pretty heavily with a, a documentarian and film and video okay. over the course of the week. It'll be on the website. It'll be there. So and then we when don't people know. get curious about this, I want them to be able to stay engaged with it because right. my experience is that you plant some seeds. I've been to I think I've been to all of the mm -hmm. residencies for some sample mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm intrigued by uh, the eight to eighty, which was right. last year's theme. Uh, you know, let's talk a little bit about some of the results. I think about it in terms of, uh, I have a question for you about universal design. That mm -hmm. may or may not be a fair question. It may not be your expertise, but I'm intrigued by it because um, I'm working, I have a client right now where I'm working with people with intellectual disabilities mm -hmm. and they're talking about access. Mm -hmm. And yep. you're talking about access. Yep. We're all talking about access. The reality is, as, as was pointed out last year, is that we're all getting ready to, to take on our disability. That's right. You know, um, temporary uh, mobile. Temporarily right, we mobile, are temporarily yeah. mobile. So uh, as we think about um, place making, what has been the impact, do you think, of that, uh, that visit last year? And how is it mm -hmm. going to show up in our lives next year, the year after that? I'm noticing new, new curb cuts in, right. Right. in St. Paul, much, so, yeah. much bigger ones, right. um, which I'm super excited about. I don't, it's a funny thing to think about, but that's infrastructure that mm -hmm. makes people have a better connectivity. Yeah. Walking, uh, walking is, as Gil Penalosa said, is a human right. Um, uh, we we call it walk, bike, and roll in terms mm -hmm. of uh, both the, the 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 cycling aspect, people powered uh, movement, and then and then folks also are uh, re are required to roll either through wheelchairs or other kinds of uh, assistance. So so the universal design that you mentioned, I think one of the basic tenets of that is empathy towards uh, the people in the environment, what their needs are, and an 880 is a um, a group, uh, a, a phrase that Gil Penalosa came up with. Um, and we should define it, eight years to 80 years old, yeah. that, that you live in a city right. with that idea that it's for me if I'm eight or 80. Right. And eight and 80 are almost like the canaries in the mine shaft. Right. They, are, they are a real indicator. So not to go too far into it, but the question is, would you feel comfortable sending an eight-year-old across the street? And there are streets that you would feel oh. that way, and there are that you, no way. No way. And likewise, would <laughs> you feel- I live three houses from one, I would never do that. There you go. <laughs> yeah. And likewise, 80 years old. 80-year-old yeah. and, and have different constraints and re, and yeah. things you know where how, where the zone of refuge you know can you make it across and so on and so yeah. forth and then I guess the point is is that if we design uh, streets for eight-year eight-year-olds and 80-year-olds the rest of us are going to benefit from a, right. a much, a so much I better kind of environment. Trend. So that's something that was accomplished last year I want to go back to so that reference of if we can uh, form that kind of human right and mm -hmm. access how does that then connect to the, the topic this year, which is equity. And I guess I, I want to go back to what is equity, um, what will you be talking about in that regard, uh, Wing, around equity? What are your expectations of that for the residency? Hmm. Well, being a photographer, I have photographed thousands of strangers. And I'm always confronted with what I thought, my assumptions. Mm -hmm. And then when I enter someone else's reality, um, I'm always thinking about my biases. And my biases, from what I understand, biases are formed at a very early age. Mm -hmm. So empathy, what does empathy have to do with design? Um, we live in a very polarized culture. You might, some people would say more polarized than ever. There's very little empathy. And how can you have empathy if we otherize each other daily? Mm -hmm. And so what I'm trying to do is photograph who we are. And I try to do it in a way, and it is subjective what I do, but I try to do it in a way where it seems like I'm a fly on the wall. How do you take a photograph where the person in the photograph, the person who took the photograph, and the person looking at the photograph all have agency? And so how, does this, how, do, how can you make a city that reflects all the people in the city? I, ta I was talking to an urban planner, and Community engagement. There's very little um, guideline on community engagement. It's really up to urban planners to decide what to do. And so when you have a meeting, um, the people who have the most wherewithal show up at the meeting, or have exactly. the biggest gripe. Um, and of course, it's not re representative of the community. A lot of people in the community, they don't have the time. It's survival. Mm -hmm. It's just day to day. Right. And so these big issues, and they feel like they're not connected to the city. They don't have a say. Mm -hmm. And so I think um, large systems that have been put in place, urban planning system, educational system, healthcare system, uh, society has, has shifted more in the last 15 years than in the last 100 years. And these systems are big, 
ships that can't move, that can't shift with, with culture. Everybody's trying to catch up with it and trying to have different tools. Art is a tool now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, you know, that's such an interesting question. Um, you know, art as the tool. Um, mm -hmm. Is that a premise that we're leading with on this discussion? Well, I think, um, so you're, you should ask the less artist, of course, but that. But I think the idea <coughs> around engagement that these, that um, uh, public art has evolved so much as well as a discipline over the last, uh, over the last 10 years. And, and a lot of that is engagement based. And it's uh, let's, starting. Let's break down engagement. Because we both used, you both okay. used it. And I want to know what do we mean by it? I think it's, it's conversations between people um, at, at various uh, scales, one on one. Uh, one a group of six people uh, standing around. Um, there's a there's a, um, a Somali tradition of kind of talking circles that you see in in parks and outside uh, coffee shops. So the say. ability to have a conversation mm -hmm. and hold mm -hmm. that thought. If you're just joining us, I'm speaking with Wing Young Huey and Tim Griffin about creative placemaking and the upcoming uh, symposium next week in St. Paul in Minneapolis. So this idea of it, I mean, so engagement is legitimately, uh, it, it, you set the context with these three layers of view mm -hmm. on the photograph. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. person being photographed, you, mm -hmm. the audience. All of those are a level of engagement. Right. And so uh, one of the things I, I think about is, is slowing down enough to actually see mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and to uh, teach ourselves to observe closely. Mm -hmm. Um, because, as you point out, our assumptions get in the way, and there are just so many ways in which, you know, you moved over here a minute ago and then back there, and that, that changed the view, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It changes mm -hmm. their experience of the conversation. And so we talk about microaggressions. We talk about, you know, these are, these are topics that, that people bring up in equity situations. We are polarized. We don't listen much. We've been, we're being taught to shout at one another. Um, what does it take to get us to sit down and have a conversation? Um, one of the best reactions I received from my public art projects, photographing everyday life and then putting those photographs in the neighborhoods where I took them, in store windows, on sides of buildings. One person said, well, when I drive or walk down University Avenue, I see things. I want to stare. Mm. Your photographs gave me an opportunity to stare. Oh, I love that. And by staring, understanding. Mm -hmm. But how we think of each other has to do with all, the all the, of the photographs that we've consumed. How do you go beyond looking at a photograph and actually talking to someone you normally wouldn't talk to because you think they are different than you? That's what I do. I talk to thousands of strangers. <laughs> In my personal life, I wouldn't do this. But with a camera around my neck, this is what I do. And then what I do as a, in my profession leads into my personal life. And all of, all of those thousands of encounters become a part of my human experience. It's my way of normalizing the world. But people do not talk to each other in the way they used to because we live in a more diverse society. You walk down the street in a neighborhood, nobody's out. Beautiful afternoon, Saturday, nobody's out. Everybody is in front of a screen. We, it's young people, it's social media. And you, you idealize that other person and you idealize yourself. Mm -hmm. And conversations are very shallow. And it's more difficult for a young person to talk to someone they don't know, I think, than ever before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I think about um, my experience being on University Avenue for 20 years mm -hmm. and just even the last five and how much my life has changed there because of the light rail. And I now see people on the street, mm -hmm. not very many yet, mm -hmm. and I'm able to now walk between some of my spaces mm -hmm. where I do my community organizing and work. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, someone from Urban Boat Builders sees me walking by and he comes out, you know, the, the executive director has mm -hmm. stepped out and said hello to me. That didn't happen mm -hmm. many years mm -hmm. ago. Mm -hmm. What does, uh, what do specific place interventions, mm -hmm. what can they do to change, mm -hmm. to address what you're talking about? Not only the art, mm -hmm. but these other infrastructure, this, right. this design, which is part of what we're talking right. about, isn't it? 
Well, I think you know one of the things about the light rail is that really it's um, 11 or so small towns or neighborhoods, and you can go to each stop, and they're all developing that very kind of relationship to some degree or another um, that you're talking about. And I think as um, the idea of so I, I realize as a community designer that each of these are different and it's um, so to be able to go in and listen and observe you know what's happening in Little Mekong for example and how that that is um, and the and the Rondo neighborhood are coming together at the Victoria station to create a very vibrant area and exactly that where you sit you have regulars and people who you know people who are there and they start to know each other it it is very much like a small a small town um, um, Prospect Park area same thing it's evolving as a as the um, uh, innovation district and and likewise uh, creative enterprise zone. So I think the the idea of of of, of ourselves as um, as designers as uh, expert expert citizens, if you will, um, uh, um, you know we have skills and an observation capacity. Probably talking right away isn't our best uh, our best move. Uh, listening yeah. can help, and the stories really come. The stories are are always different in each community, and and to the degree that we can help uh, translate those stories um, and and create the place that that speaks to that, the public life is different in each of these uh, station areas, and uh, uh, and then obviously investments over time, like the light rail, is a major investment. But there are also short term things that can be done on a, a kind of a, a daily or a weekly or a kind of an event based is to start to draw people out and start to see the activity that's happening outside the buildings. And that's really what placemaking is about, is the public life outside of the buildings and the spaces. And the buildings really provide the, the people that fuel that. But the public realm is the arena where um, that, all, that all plays out. I really love this idea of citizen experts. So is that one of the goals? Um, I mean, is, is that part of this dialogue? I mean, we're hosting Mm -hmm. a conversation a half day in here in the creative enterprise zone to mm -hmm. you'll be our our featured mm -hmm. expert uh, and and our goal is to really figure out how to activate a rather awkward but exciting place we're very committed to job creation you know in our neighborhood uh, improving prosperity I mean what kinds of expertise are we wanting to draw on as we have as you have, as you have this and and how do citizens get to feel that they're the experts, do you think? Well, I'll just start real quick and then turn it over to Wing. The, the idea is to empower people with uh, data and information and actually make them comfortable enough um, to be in a setting where they can, they can say how they think it should be pri prioritized uh, or, or applied. Uh, because there always are, are alternatives, you know, you, um, and, and they should be based on a set of goals or principles that you have for an area. So how can we, how can we address this opportunity, right? So it's two or three ways, have a conversation about it, how do you, how do you pick? And then um, usually the outcome is much different than you probably um, assumed in the beginning. Yeah. Anything you want to add to that? Uh, citizen experts. Um, that's what I kind of, is that what you said? Yeah, I, I can go, this, so it's kind of these, and it's, it's a little bit, um, it, it's a little bit jargony, but it's kind of to distinguish between the fact that there are, there are artists and professionals who, who train in an area of, of city building, and I would call them expert citizens, if you will, because they're, they're doing it I in see. terms of improving the public good and the public realm. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, the people who live in the area are, 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 um, uh, citizen experts. Okay. They, they are expert in their community and their yeah. needs. So, and it's, so it's striking that balance. And, and, and really translating it. I mean, that's the third mm -hmm. piece is how do you translate those, those uh, from a, an empathy point of view, as, as Wing was saying, is how do you get that out in terms of if there are investments that need to be made in the community, what are the priorities mm -hmm. versus, and you have, as, uh, as mentioned, sit, uh, systems, big systems yeah. make changes, but also change can happen on a very fine, uh, fine grain. At a park, or at a playground, or at a, so, or at a so street this, crossing, you can actually do it. So yeah, this dialogue right. and, and the way in which artists like Wing have have made people visible mm -hmm. in a new way mm -hmm. is part of pulling out that mm -hmm. expertise. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems to me is that's mm -hmm. really what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Is if mm -hmm. I look at your chalkboards and what they're talking about, mm -hmm. they're really saying, "I have a point of view. Mm -hmm. I have something I want you to know." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's my priority. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I did a, a residency with Ashley Hansen, who is a um, theater engagement artists um, and we were part of creative city making mm -hmm. uh, with intermediate arts and they teamed up artists with urban planners 
And so what we did was we um, came up with uh, nine different engagement concepts. Uh, so instead of a meeting, we would bring a ping pong table ah. out in public. So there was a um, there was a uh, there was a public event. Next to our table was a uh, was a was a was an urban planner with a map. At our table, we had what we called a Jeopardy board, in which you could pick a question on this board about the community, whether it's mm -hmm. about parks, whether it's about safe spaces, and um, have a discussion, and then write something on the chalkboard, and we'll photograph you. Uh, or you could play ping pong, and you could write what you think is an essential question about city making, write it on the ping pong ball, and then play ping pong discussing the question you wrote. Ah. And, and then write something on a chalkboard that uh, was a result of this discussion. Mm -hmm. Basically, we just had a community meeting disguised. As, ping pong, as ping, ping pong, pong playing as <laughs> disguised as a community <laughs> meeting. And so the, the, the urban planners next to us are going like, wow, we've got to use that. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do with a map? How are people going to be engaged with a map? Right. So, um, but what we did, uh, we, we came up with, we approached a couple, several hundred people with chalkboards. We had someone uh, quantify the chalkboards. Uh, this chalkboard is about health. This chalkboard is about um, food deserts. And then we had it graphed. And uh, you measured, measured it. You measured it. it. We measured it. And urban planners looked at it and they said, well, it's pretty much the data we got. <laughs> <laughs> there so you go. Is, is the importance what the data says or how it is, um, how do you get the data? Yeah. Is as important as what the data says. I, I really love that. Mm -hmm. We're going to wrap up by saying, let's, let's, uh, what, gotcha. how can people connect uh, mm -hmm. to the residency that's right. next week? They can, there's um, real, four real, days of events. Yeah, four days of events, and I think uh, there is, uh, most of them are free, and it's uh, regi there's registration. Uh, they're getting quite full, so do go to the website. Mm -hmm. And then uh, a new thing this year is the Great River Gathering Dinner on Thursday the 12th, in which we're going to attempt to kind of play back what the findings were from the week. So if you, um, if you can't make it to the events of the week or you want to make sure it gets reported correctly, um, join us on uh, Thursday evening at the, at the River Center, and that's on the website as well, too. If you had a dream, just in a couple words, about what might be different in five years because of the conversations that happen next week, what, what might that be, Wayne? If you walk down the street and you look at someone and smile at them, right now that's considered a threat. People do not look at each other in public. If you could do that in five years, everyone does it, or at least not feel like you're imposing, invading someone's space, that would be a big step. So that's a, a very small move, but it makes, has a big impact, is yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. So you're going you're gonna to help us, we're going to help each other learn how to break down some of these barriers next week and yeah. commit to doing that over time through this work. Absolutely. So things do change as they a result do. of this residency? They have. Mm -hmm. They have, yeah. And do you have a dream, quickly? Um, that you can, that people can comfortably walk across the street and get to the other side, and that senior citizens can get to grocery stores on the, in their neighborhood. Thank you. Yep. Thank you both very much. That's all we have time for. Please come and join us again next week on the St. Paul Forum.